I'd like to welcome our, our, our guests, uh, many who have been here before, by our Mr. Backhurst. Um, I welcome you uh, to, to, to our committee. Um, I wish you well in, in your future endeavours. Um, and, you know, I would like this meeting to be about talking about the future of, of RTE, uh, reinstilling uh, public confidence in uh, the national broadcaster, um, you know, talking about the culture, the governance, the oversight. But unfortunately, to get there, we need to deal with these issues here, um, you know, to start that process of reinstilling uh, public confidence in um, RTE. Um, and central to that is the information that we're given. Um, to help us in um, the work, uh, important work that we have here in terms of the expenditure of, of uh, public funding. Um, and unfortunately, that information continues uh, to be drip fed right up until uh, today. And that is, um, you know, disappointing and unfortunate, it has to be said. Um, can I just ask, in, in, in terms of uh, the correspondence that was furnished um, on Tuesday uh, by Mr. Kelly and Mr. Tuberty, in terms of uh, the new emails that have, have, have emerged, um, why those emails weren't furnished uh, to this committee uh, previously? Um, because I, I, I think there was critical information there uh, provided in terms of the emails dated, uh, you know, December 19th, 2019, uh, 20th of, of February, in terms of the guarantee, uh, the side letter that would uh, be issued and, you know, the language is very strong. Why was that information or those emails not furnished uh, to this committee? Maybe Mr. Lynch? Can I refer to our Director of Legal on that? Just yes. to explain the process in our conversation. Well, very, very, very briefly, um, yes. maybe yes. just Sorry, why were you not? I, I will be very quick. I know at the last meeting there was a discussion about the legal file and legal professional privilege. After that meeting and based on comments by the Chair and, and Deputy Kelly. What I have done is I have sent that legal file out for external review. We are taking advice on legal professional privilege. There are also a number of other legal issues that have arisen. And we will come back to the committee once we okay. have that okay. advice with the additional documents that we can share. At okay. this point in time, I need advice okay. as to that. Okay. Can, can, can I ask as to whether those emails were shared with Grant Thornton when they initiated their, their, their review? Yes, they were shared. Yeah, yeah, yes, they were. Um, and there's a lot of um, talk about different meetings that had taken place with different individuals in, in, in those emails. Um, uh, can, can, can I ask, um, you know, do we have a, a full record of who attended all of those uh, meetings that are, are referred to? No. no so, for don't. example, that email of the 20th of February refers to a meeting. There's no note of that meeting, and I don't have clarity as to who was at that So meeting. we don't know who was at it. No. Uh, there was no minutes taken no. um, that we, we, we know of. Can I ask, uh, Ms Malouli, were you at any of those meetings no. or anyone from Legal Affairs? Um, there would have been someone from Legal Affairs at certain meetings. The meetings she was at, there are notes of those meetings, but there are other meetings referred to, okay. and there are can, no can notes. Can I ask that the notes um, that the person from Legal Affairs attended, can, can I ask that they would be uh, notes, furnished before? Notes drafted by a solicitor in the context of giving advice would be legally privileged, and we are going to assert privilege. However, if there are other documents that I can give that can provide the same information, okay. we will do that. Can I refer to uh, the uh, testimony given by uh, the ex-Chief uh, Financial Officer Breed O'Keefe, uh, where she said there was major kickback from RTE in, in terms of providing uh, the guarantee, um, and she was very, very strong in, in relation to that up until the end of, of March 2020, and I think that was a view shared by uh, the current Chief Financial Officer, uh, Mr Collins, that there was absolutely no desire, uh, no uh, uh, absolute kickback in, 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 in relation to that. The emails um, clearly show that there was intent uh, to issue a, a side letter um, underwriting um, these payments and, and, and guaranteeing them. Um, it, it, it was stated that uh, four days before the testimony given by Breed O'Keefe, um, you know, this issue was raised with RTE um, that um, you know, there, 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 there was detailed correspondence there showing there was clear intent by RTE to underwrite those. Um, and that email was, was sent. Can I ask who, who received that email? Mr Lynch, did you see that email that um, Mr Kelly referred to on Tuesday? If I can, that email came to me and it was circulated and I took advice on. But can I again give some clarity on that? 
the, the email of the 20th of February has been characterised in a way okay. that... Can, can, can I ask, when, when you I say that email was circulated, who was it, it circulated to? I think it would have been circulated to um, the Deputy Director General. Okay. When it came and, in. and you said you didn't see it? I, I don't uh, think oh, he received oh. it. He would Sorry, have been you're talking about when Mr me. Kelly sent that with legal correspondence last week? Yeah, four, yeah correct. Four, four days before the testimony given by Breed O'Keefe. Yes, I did see that. You, you, you did see 100%. that. Um, yeah. and, and you sat here at that meeting uh, where Breed O'Keefe gave very convincing uh, testimony that um, there was absolutely no desire by RTE to give uh, guarantees, to give a, a side letter. Um, and you knew that this was being challenged, that narrative was being challenged uh, by Mr Truberty and uh, Noel Kelly. And you, you, you didn't feel it necessary to um, give that information that the narrative being portrayed by uh, Ms O'Keefe was, was being challenged? So if you remember when Ms O'Keefe uh, did that, I did actually refer on the record to the fact that I had received something and I began to explain it. And as Ms O'Keefe then clarified, well, I haven't seen any correspondence. So I did refer to it. Uh, but again, for me, this is a point in a negotiation. It's not a contractually binding agreement in terms of showing an intent to underwrite this, and that's why I keep referring to okay. the meeting on May the 7th, 2020. Okay. Well, it's, the it's, it's, it's very clear now that the, the, the revelation of, of these emails, the, the, the people um, that are CC'd in it, um, D Forbes, uh, Jim Jennings, uh, Breed O'Keefe, um, refer to the meetings who we have no knowledge who attended those meetings, that the attempt to portray this as, as some sort of, um, you know, situation where people were operating in silos, that, you know, nobody bar one had, had all of the information, that is now certainly not the case. Would I be correct in saying that, Mr Backhurst? No, I'm afraid I don't agree with you, Deputy. I do think people are operating in silos. I think some people knew some information. Um, I'm not convinced anyone else knew all the information. But what I would say is, this is one of the things I'm addressing. These kind of processes, ad hoc processes, the issuing of side letters, you know, um, things that are not in, uh, uh, clear to everybody, and that this is not surface to the full leadership team, um, these kind of important agreements. Um, well, 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 can I put it to you that, you know, the critical information here in terms of this uh, commercial uh, agreement, um, of 75,000 euro, uh, the uh, notion and the assurances given um, that are contained in those emails that RTE would, we would issue a side letter, um, and the number of people that were CC'd in that critical, I would say critical information, would show that um, you know there was not uh, you know a, a situation of people operating in silo. Key people in key roles at the top of the organisation knew that this mechanism that was contrived uh, to deceive and to conceal payments show that they, those, those key people were not operating in silo. Um, they were operating in collaboration in, in, in relation uh, to this deal. Would I be correct in saying that, Mr Backhorst? I'm not sure. I, no, I'm afraid I still don't agree with that. I think... OK. You, okay. Oh, look, sorry, That's, can I just finish my answer, Deputy, if, if I may? Um, I think some, there were clearly a number of people in new parts of this who should have spoken up against what was going on, in my view. I don't think, you know, this is part of the problem, it was fragmented, there were discussions going on, they weren't properly recorded, this is what I'm having to deal with and sort out, and okay, there, were, there okay. won't be any of these kind of okay. various sorry, discussions going on Can we just move on, because I'm, yeah, I'm conscious sure. of, of the time. I just want to talk about the, the two payments that were paid out, the 75,000 payments paid out uh, by, by RTE, um, and it's now being stated here that, um, and we know factually that there was no contract there for year two and three. Uh, we know that there was uh, invoices um, issued, um, uh, using the terminology <laughs> consultancy fee. We know in the Grant Thornton report there was no consultancy provided by either the agent or, 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 or Mr Tuberty. Uh, we know that Mr Tuberty and his agent um, here at the committee on, on Tuesday made reference to the six outstanding um, gigs um, that, 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 that were due. Um, and has been paid for. Can I ask, in, in, in relation to um, those dates um, or do, those gigs that have been referred to, has there been any communication with Renault in, in, in terms of...? So, so just to clarify on that, firstly, you know, I want to apologise to Renault because Renault have been dragged into this 
Uh, so it's okay. outrageous in a way yeah, yeah. in terms of that. Firstly, to say that straight off the bat. Um, secondly, is it was you know if you look at Grant Thornton and you look at the testimony of Geraldine O'Leary here, it was completely obvious that even in Grant Thornton, she says when Noel Kelly um, comes looking for his clients two seventy fives, she goes, "Not my problem. Okay. I'm not going back can, to Renault. Can, can, it's a one year so, agreement." So, so, sorry, Mr. Lynch. Can I, can I just get to the crux of it here? Yeah, um, sorry. That, you know, exactly. um, Mr. Tuberty and his agent were paid out for services that weren't provided. Essentially, um, Mr. Tuberty has said that if asked, he will pay back that €150,000 uh, to RTE. When previously challenged in, in terms of why RTE paid out those payments, they said it was based on, on, on legal advice. Can I ask now, what is the, 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 the position um, of RTE? Has RTE asked Mr. Tuberty and his agent to repay uh, that €150,000 uh, that, 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 that was paid out for these notional um, gigs that, that were not uh, provided. So has Mr Tuberty, he has said he will pay that money back if asked. Has he been asked to pay that money back? No, no we haven't. And okay. the reason, Why not? Thank you. Reason, can I explain? Chair? Briefly. Yeah, the reason we haven't is because there was a verbal agreement given to the agent that RTE would, uh, would pay the money if there was no sponsorship in place. And to be clear, that is acknowledged by the agent in Grand Thornton even though I note yesterday, uh, the day before yesterday, the agent said if there was no sponsorship agreement, well, it, it, and I, I have the, the quote, no money would be paid. It's completely obvious to me, reading Grant Thornton and the correspondence, that the agent knew RT would be paying. RT should never have paid the two invoices. Mr. And Rikers, just briefly, we should have declared very briefly. Just yeah, Deputy, you make a very valid point here. And there's two things here for me. There's a legal agreement, and RT has a, a liability, as Adrian has just explained there. And I think there's then a moral question about what's the right thing to do. And I think when we do come to have you know, any discussions with Mr Tuberty um, going forward, um, I welcomed his offer the other day and we'll wait and see what he does about it. 